Tonight on EKB Evening News at 6, Floyd County attorneys reach out to help those affected by disability suspensions. Good evening, I'm Gary Slaw. And I'm Jill Fraley Dotson. Five days after 1,500 disability recipients began receiving notices that their benefits were in jeopardy due to suspicions of fraud, an emergency meeting of the Floyd County Bar Association was held last night to find ways to address the problem. Of particular concern were the 900 recipients who have been told that their benefits have been suspended immediately. EKB News reporter Courtney Lovern attended last night's meeting and filed this report. Allegations of fraudulent practices against Stanville attorney Eric C. Kahn and four doctors have many of Kahn's former clients looking for ways to make ends meet now that their benefits are being cut off. When you're on fixed income and then you get a letter like this, it's, it's really heartbreaking. 1,500 letters were sent out to Kahn's clients last week and around 900 of those deemed disabled are now getting their benefits pulled because the Social Security Administration has found evidence to say the disability cases were won on fraudulent claims. Prestonsburg attorney Ned Pillersdorf is offering his legal advice and during an emergency meeting of the Floyd County Bar Association yesterday evening spoke to many of those affected. Uh, tonight was an opportunity to meet with all the clients who have been contacting us since they were notified by the Social Security Administration that their uh, Social Security benefits were being suspended and to explain to them what options we have to try to help them. Attorneys at the meeting gave those in attendance legal advice on anything they needed to understand about the letters. Pillars Dwarf also plans to file a federal lawsuit because the benefits shouldn't have been cut off before there was a hearing. If we don't do anything, these people who are desperate for money, uh, and by definition they're trying to live on $1,100, $1,200 a month, it might be 14, 16 months till they have a hearing, and Lord knows what will happen to these folks. During the meeting, the group discussed that they want Pillars Dwarf to file a class action lawsuit in federal court over the suspensions, and also want him to file a lawsuit in Floyd Circuit Court against Kahn for allegedly violating the Consumer Protection Act and defrauding these clients. It's a bad, bad move. You know, when you got this cold going out, and then you got the disabled being cut, you know, I think they need to work on the Congress and Senators and cut their wages down. Because, you know, when we're fixed on, you can't feed elephant peanuts. You know, it just don't work. Reporting for EKB Evening News at 6, I'm Courtney Levering. A police officer was involved in a shooting in Wolf Pit Community in Pike County. Police say they received a report of shots being fired around 10 o'clock last night. Officers responded to the residence of 54-year-old Donald May. Upon their arrival, police say May allegedly opened fire on them. Police then returned fire, striking May. May was taken to Pikeville Medical Center with non-life-threatening injuries. May has been charged with four counts of attempted murder of a police officer. He is currently being held in the Pike County Detention Center. We are getting word tonight of a fatal mining accident that happened earlier today. Details are scarce, but authorities say the accident happened around noon at Apex Mining at Phelps in Pike County. The man, who has not yet been identified, died at the scene. More information is expected to be released later on. A Pikeville woman is dead tonight following a wreck this morning in Floyd County. According to Kentucky State Police, 76-year-old Eunice Morton was driving on US 23 at Betsy Lane when she struck a guardrail. Her car then ricocheted across US 23 and struck a rock face. She was pronounced dead at the scene by Floyd County Coroner Greg Nelson. According to police, Morton was not wearing a seat belt at the time of the accident. A Chapmanville, West Virginia man has been indicted in U.S. District Court in Charleston for distributing oxymorphone, an opiate painkiller sold under the brand name Opana. Now, William Toller Jr. appeared Tuesday before U.S. Magistrate Judge Dwayne L. Tinsley. During that hearing, Toller was allowed to remain free pending court proceedings under an unsecured $10,000 bond. According to the indictment, the charge stems from an April 10, 2014 incident. Toller is scheduled to appear in court again tomorrow for arraignment. A Pike County man faces a laundry list of charges after being arrested shortly before midnight last night. 39-year-old John P. Ball of Raccoon was observed by a witness wrecking in a dish at Raccoon Creek, then leaving the scene. 
The witness followed Ball into Pikeville where he then allegedly turned the wrong way down Main Street. We received a call from Kentucky State Police Post 9 that a vehicle had been involved in a collision at the Raccoon area and was headed toward Pikeville. Our officers located the vehicle on Don Combs Bridge, at which point the vehicle turned up Main Street the wrong way. Our officers initiated a traffic stop. Um, the fellow inside the vehicle would not exit the vehicle. Our officers approached the vehicle and noticed that there was significant damage to the vehicle and the subject inside was injured. They called for EMS. According to the police report, a half-empty beer can was also found inside the vehicle. He was arrested and charged with DUI, resisting arrest, leaving the scene of an accident, reckless driving, and other charges. Coming up next on EKB Evening News at 6, a local teen is about to take the stage in the Scripps National Spelling Bee tonight. And an area church looking to tackle hunger by offering a free lunch tomorrow. We'll be right back. A Pikeville 14-year-old will take Spelling's biggest stage tonight as he competes in the finals of the Scripps National Spelling Bee. Christ Central student Paul Keaton, shown here being interviewed prior to a match, was, has reached the top 10 of the contest, which will air at 8 o'clock tonight on ESPN, live from Washington, D.C. As a finalist, Keaton has already won at least $1,500. The champion will receive $35,000 in cash, a $2,500 savings bond, $1,100 worth of reference books, and a trophy. After last week's razor-thin margin in the Republican governor's race, Recanvas today has upheld Matt Bevin's 83-vote win over James Comer for the Republican nomination. Statewide, there was no change in the vote totals. Pike County Clerk, uh, also Rhonda Taylor, said they were simply glad today's procedure uh, was a recanvas and not a recount. It's been a very busy day here for us. Uh, we had to take all the figures from election night, re-add those and make sure that they matched. So it's called a recap and that's what we did. Uh, when a race is really close, the candidate has the right to ask for a recap or a recount and we got a little lucky on that. It was a recap. Uh, the process is not as hard as the other, so we, we were fortunate. Locally, the Pike, Floyd, Johnson, Martin, and McGoffin counties, along with Knox County, all reported no changes in their vote totals. According to Hunger in America, 16 million children face hunger each day, and one in five children go to bed hungry every night. 35% of senior citizens have to choose between buying their groceries and paying for their medical care. These are just a few reasons why the Hatfield and McCoy Pig Challenge, along with the Hatfield and McCoy Feud Tour app, has collaborated with the Grace Fellowship Kitchen to work toward having free lunches each month. Tomorrow from 11 a.m. to, to 1 p.m. at the Grace Fellowship Church, located at 115 Wolford Street in downtown Pikeville. The first free lunch will be provided to anyone who would like to come. Jay Shepard with the Pike County Tourism says this is something the church has wanted to provide for a while. This is actually a collaboration between the, you know, Debbie Bailey and, um, you know, Kathy Hamilton at the church. Uh, they wanted to do this. has been a dream of theirs for a long time. And uh, I hooked them up with a lady who's already doing this kind of stuff. Her name is Susie New, and she's with the Hatfield McCoy Pig Challenge, which is, is pretty much the same thing. I thought there'd be a nice little collaboration between the two. Everybody's welcome. Anybody who wants to come and help with it, they can come too and, and be a part of it. So uh, we really love just to have everybody come out and visit us. The University of Pikeville City View Cafe will be providing the food, which will include ham and an assortment of sides. If you would like to volunteer or donate to the free community lunch, log on to the church's Facebook page at the Grace Fellowship Kitchen. If you are an parent of a 7th or 8th grade student looking for something for them to do this summer, Big Sandy Community and Technical College, the East Kentucky Science Center, and the University of Kentucky will host Appalachian BOLD camps for 7th and 8th graders in June. BOLD stands for Bioeconomy, Outreach, Leadership, and Development. The camps will expose students to future careers in science and technology. The free camps will run June 8th through 11th 
and from June 15th through the 18th and again June 22nd through 25th and will be held on the Prestonsburg campus of BC, BSCTC. Seating is limited. For more information, contact Pauletta Burke at 606-886-7398 or email at pburke0014 at kctcs.edu. Coming up next, Jamie Johnson will recap two 15th Region Championship games played last night. But first, EKB Chief Meteorologist Lathan Hopkins will be in with her weather forecast. We'll be back in two minutes. Pretty nice day across the area. Some uh, regions this morning seeing some rain, but that kind of tapered off throughout we the had, day. Uh, a dry afternoon, but uh, this evening noticing a couple of showers redeveloping across the region. Stop the radar showing those very hit and miss, but especially across parts of Central Pike County, Southern Floyd County, and throughout Letcher County. Picking up some light rain as we speak. We will zoom in here just a little closer. Most of this moving to the north and to the northeast. So maybe a couple of sprinkles over toward Pikeville. If this holds together here, this will make a run toward Pikeville probably within the next half hour to an hour. For you folks also in Wheelwright over toward Wayland. Again, moving to the north and to the east, just a few light showers. Actually, it's hard to believe that we do need the rain and I'll show you why here in just a second. Temperature right now, looking outside, 78 degrees. Feels like 78 with the humidity at 63%. Winds from the northwest at about three miles per hour, and that pressure will be falling throughout the next couple of days, as a matter of fact. Now, the satellite radar composite showing we do have one little disturbance rotating right across Kentucky as we speak. You'll see it right here, moving right to the northeast. That's helping kick off those showers and maybe a few thunderstorms across parts of the region this evening. They should die out overnight tonight. And then again, we could see another round of showers and storms tomorrow. But this information just coming out today, and it's hard to believe after the April that we had, but we are now in the first category of a drought. Yeah, try to think about that. We are abnormally dry across all of eastern Kentucky, southwest Virginia, western West Virginia. Why is that? Well, we had a pretty dry January, but February, March, April, all above average. But look at May. We barely picked up an inch and a half of rain officially at the National Weather Service office in Jackson. About three inches of rain below where we should be this time of the year. As a matter of fact, 3.12 is where we stand as far as the month is concerned, below average. Still above average for the year, but below average for the month. We'll have to see how things play out for the next couple of days. Satellite and radar composite for the next couple of hours. You can see those showers continuing through the overnight hours tonight, dying out. And then tomorrow, here they come again, another area, another disturbance expected to move through. And that will again be the focus for showers tomorrow. About a 50% chance of rain for tomorrow. Your pollen report, sponsored by Faith Pharmacy, Adams Plaza in Pikeville. 6.2 on Friday, 6.7 on Saturday, with a better chance of rain moving in on Sunday that will drop to 5.2. As far as the seven day forecast is concerned, as I mentioned, 50% chance of rain on Friday, 30% on Saturday, 70% on Sunday, and that hit and miss shower and thunderstorm threat, well, it's going to be with us Monday through Thursday of next week. And of course, you can catch the latest forecast in tomorrow's edition of the Appalachian News Express. Very good. Still. Still, even though it's a broken record. Still. Daily chance of showers and storms and temperatures in the 80s. Pretty much all you need. Just hit and miss. Hit and miss. <laughs> all right, Lathan, thank you. Thank you. And we'll be back with sports in two minutes. Well, Jamie's all eyes beginning to look towards the state tournament. Yes, we have finally wrapped up. Actually, at least locally, we wrapped up the sports season with baseball and softball last night. Now, state tournament play last night. Who's going to represent us? We're going to find out. Because of such strong competition in baseball year in and year out, with the likes of Johnson Central, Paintsville, and Sheldon Clark High School, the Lawrence County Bulldogs were more than happy to vacate the 57th district and move to the 60th district this season. It didn't matter that the Bulldogs would travel through two counties to play a district baseball game. All that mattered 
was finding the best path possible to winning a region title. Last night, one team stood in Lawrence County's way of making that a reality. Those pesky Johnson Central Golden Eagles, they can't get away from them. A beautiful night at Prestonsburg Sports Park, top of the first. Central comes out swinging. Jordan Blanton with this shot to left field. It was scored Zach Sloan. Golden Eagles up early, 1-0. Next, Seth Ratliff skies this one to center. Pass Bill Buckner, and no, Ray Knight didn't score like in 1986 for the Mets, but same reaction. Central would push three across in the first to lead early, and look at Ratliff coming the third. I get so emotional, baby. Yeah. Bottom of the third, Austin Bailey for Lawrence County draws the bases loaded walk for the Dogs' first run of the game. Up next, helping the cause would be Chase Coverdale with this slap to second. And a bad throw would allow the Lawrence County Bulldogs to tie the game at 3-3. We'll cut away now to the bottom of the fourth, and you'll find runners on the corners for Noah Lambert. Bring in the arc. The sharp grounder off third baseman's mitt there down the line. Bulldogs take their first lead, and they wouldn't look back. Johnson Central down to their final at bat. Check out the stretch by Warren Price here at first. Boom! And Lawrence County was victorious 6-3 over Johnson Central to claim the 15th Region High School Baseball Championship and nothing sweeter than defeating a longtime rival to reach the state finals. Four years since we won, it feels like 10. Uh, you know, but we've, since we've been in the region, we've played in six regional finals. We played them four times, and it's two to two now, and we've got a lot of respect for them, and, and uh, I think that feeling's mutual, but, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a great honor, tickle to death for our kids. They work hard for it. Lawrence County will begin their approach at the State Baseball Tournament this coming Monday, June 1st, 11 a.m., as the Bulldogs will face the winner of Russell and Greenup County, who are playing for the 16th Region Championship tonight. All state baseball action will happen at Whitaker Bank Ballpark, home of the legends in Lexington. Over the past five seasons, either Johnson Central or McGoffin County found themselves in the finals of the 15th Region Softball Tournament. Three of those five years, they played each other for the right to be called champion, including last night. These 57 district rivals met again. Johnson Central would only need one run, but got two. The sack fly here, sacrifice if Jill's looking to Learn the references here. Lady Eagles would get a 2-0 lead behind some good pitching going to the seventh inning. Now, Coach is letting everybody know that dinner is on him, but they can finish this off. First out would be a pop-out to shortstop. Reeled in pretty easy there. One, one down, two outs away. Next, go in the second base, the bobble, but a nice recovery as they'll get the put out at second base here. And now McGoffin County down to their final out. This can of corn wraps up the back-to-back -back region titles for the Lady Eagles as they defeat McGoffin County 2-zip. Johnson Central not satisfied just winning a region title. The Lady Eagles have unfinished business at the state tournament. In the region, your team has accomplished your goal to get the state tournament. Now this is our uh, fourth one back-to-back. Uh, -back. Like it's first back-to-back, -back, so it's, it's good to get back down there consecutive years in a row. And, uh, Hopefully we can uh, get on the win side, you know, uh, we're, I think we're 0-6, so hopefully we can get on the win, win column. The Johnson Central Lady Eagles will meet the winner of North and South, Laurel that is, at the State Softball Tournament on Thursday, June 4th at 7 p.m. from Jack Fisher Park, way down in Owensboro. Finally, in West Virginia, the coaching carousel is in full motion as Tug Valley head basketball coach Garland Rabbit Thompson announced his resignation today. Thompson won a school record 153 games along with two West Virginia State basketball titles in eight seasons as coach of the Panthers. Also, rival Mingo Central is searching for their fourth new basketball coach in five years as Brad Napier stepped down last week from that position. Napier had led the Miners to the state basketball tournament for the first time in their brief school history this past season and is now leaving Mingo Central for a teaching job at Logan High, who's also looking for a new head basketball coach. Jill, Gary, can you keep up with all these changes? One's leaving, one's going to. It's mm -hmm. three open jobs. I'm just trying to make notes. You're not going anywhere, are you? I, uh, my contract's okay. not up right okay. now, so I don't know. Well, just keep us posted. But I can be bought. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Jamie, thank you. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
Lathan, my garden needs some water. A lot of folks saying that exact <laughs> same thing, and we still have that daily threat of a shower or a thunderstorm, not only tomorrow, not only this weekend, but even into next week. Best chance of rain will be Sunday into Monday, each and every day, very hazy, hot, and humid, highs in the low to mid-80s. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Lathan and Jamie. What's coming up tonight? Upine graduation, our one of our own cameramen, Charles mm -hmm. Mims, will walk the plank. He's right behind us. <laughs> he, he, he made it, but you can watch the Upine graduation when we're done here. Yeah, congratulations to all the graduates. <laughs> yeah. Well, that will do it for tonight's EKB Evening News. Remember, you can get more local news anytime by listening to the radio stations of East Kentucky Broadcasting. You can also follow EKB News and EKB TV on Facebook and on Twitter. We leave you tonight with scenes from the Ratliff Hole River Access at the Brakes Interstate Park. Good night and good luck to Paul Keaton in tonight's National Spelling Bee.